July 10, Psalm 107 Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others He has redeemed you from your enemies. For He has gathered the exiles from many lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in the wilderness, lost and homeless. Hungry and thirsty, they nearly died. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble. And he rescued them from their distress. He led them straight to safety, to a city where they could live. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and deepest gloom, imprisoned in iron chains of misery. They rebelled against the words of God, scorning the counsel of the Most High. That is why he broke them with hard labor. They fell, and no one was there to help them. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He led them from the darkness and deepest gloom. He snapped their chains. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. For he broke down their prison gates of bronze. He cut apart their bars of iron. Some were fools. They rebelled and suffered for their sins. They couldn't stand the thought of food, and they were knocking on death's door. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and sing joyfully about his glorious acts. Some went off to sea in ships, plying the trade routes of the world. They, too, observed the Lord's power in action, His impressive works on the deepest seas. He spoke, and the winds rose, stirring up the waves. Their ships were tossed to the heavens and plunged again to the depths. The sailors cringed in terror. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wits' end. Lord, help! They cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He calmed the storm to a whisper and stilled the waves. What a blessing was that stillness as he brought them safely into harbor. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. Let them exalt him publicly before the congregation and before the leaders of the nation. He changes rivers into deserts and springs of water into dry, thirsty land. He turns the fruitful land into salty wastelands because of the wickedness of those who live there. But he also turns deserts into pools of water, the dry land into springs of water. He brings the hungry to settle there and to build their cities. They sow their fields, plant their vineyards, and harvest their bumper crops. How he blesses them! They raise large families there, and their herds of livestock increase. When they decrease in number and become impoverished through oppression, trouble, and sorrow, the Lord pours contempt on their princes, causing them to wander in trackless wastelands. But he rescues the poor from trouble and increases their families like flocks of sheep. The godly will see these things and be glad, while the wicked are struck silent. Those who are wise will take all this to heart. They will see in our history the faithful love of the Lord. Psalm 111 Praise the Lord. I will thank the Lord with all my heart as I meet with his godly people. How amazing are the deeds of the Lord! All who delight in Him should ponder them. Everything He does reveals His glory and majesty. His righteousness never fails. He causes us to remember His wonderful works. How gracious and merciful is our Lord! He gives food to those who fear Him. He always remembers His covenant. He has shown His great power to His people by giving them the lands of other nations. All He does is just and good, and all His commandments are trustworthy. They are forever true to be obeyed faithfully and with integrity. He has paid a full ransom for His people. He has guaranteed His covenant with them forever. What a holy, awe-inspiring name He has— Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey His commandments will grow in wisdom. Praise Him forever.
Psalm 112 Praise the Lord! How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying His commands! Their children will be successful everywhere. An entire generation of godly people will be blessed. They themselves will be wealthy, and their good deeds will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the godly. They are generous, compassionate, and righteous. Good comes to those who lend money generously and conduct their business fairly. Such people will not be overcome by evil. Those who are righteous will be long remembered. They do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. They are confident and fearless and can face their foes triumphantly. They share freely and give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. They will have influence and honor. The wicked will see this and be infuriated. They will grind their teeth in anger. They will slink away their hopes thwarted. Psalm 113 Praise the Lord. Yes, give praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. Everywhere, from east to west, praise the name of the Lord. For the Lord is high above the nations. His glory is higher than the heavens. Who can be compared with the Lord our God who is enthroned on high? He stoops to look down on heaven and on earth. He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. He sets them among princes, even the princes of his own people. He gives the childless woman a family, making her a happy mother. Praise the Lord! Psalm 114 When the Israelites escaped from Egypt, when the family of Jacob left that foreign land, the land of Judah became God's sanctuary, and Israel became his kingdom. The Red Sea saw them coming and hurried out of their way. The water of the Jordan River turned away. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. What's wrong, Red Sea, that made you hurry out of their way? What happened, Jordan River, that you turned away? Why, mountains, did you skip like rams? Why, hills, like lambs? Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. He turned the rock into a pool of water. Yes, a spring of water flowed from solid rock. July 11, Psalm 115 Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name goes all the glory, for your unfailing love and faithfulness. Why let the nations say, Where is their God? Our God is in the heavens, and he does as he wishes. Their idols are merely things of silver and gold shaped by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak. And eyes but cannot see, they have ears but cannot hear, and noses but cannot smell, they have hands but cannot feel, and feet but cannot walk, and throats but cannot make a sound. And those who make idols are just like them, as are all who trust in them. O Israel, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. O priests, descendants of Aaron, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. All you who fear the Lord, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless the people of Israel and bless the priests, the descendants of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both great and lowly. May the Lord richly bless both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. The heavens belong to the Lord, but he has given the earth to all humanity. The dead cannot sing praises to the Lord, for they have gone into the silence of the grave. But we can praise the Lord both now and forever. Praise the Lord. Psalm 116 I love the Lord because He hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. Because He bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. Death wrapped its ropes around me. The terrors of the grave overtook me. I saw only trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Please, Lord, save me. How kind the Lord is, how good He is. So merciful, this God of ours. The Lord protects those of childlike faith.
I was facing death, and he saved me. Let my soul be at rest again, for the Lord has been good to me. He has saved me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. And so I walk in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. I believed in you. So I said, I am deeply troubled, Lord. In my anxiety, I cried out to you. These people are all liars. What can I offer the Lord for all he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and praise the Lord's name for saving me. I will keep my promises to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. O Lord, I am your servant. Yes, I am your servant born into your household. You have freed me from my chains. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the house of the Lord, in the heart of Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Psalm 117 Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise Him, all you people of the earth. For He loves us with unfailing love. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Praise the Lord. Psalm 118 Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let all Israel repeat, His faithful love endures forever. Let Aaron's descendants, the priests, repeat, His faithful love endures forever. Let all who fear the Lord repeat, His faithful love endures forever. In my distress I prayed to the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Yes, the Lord is for me. He will help me. I will look in triumph at those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in people. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Though hostile nations surrounded me, I destroyed them all with the authority of the Lord. Yes, they surrounded and attacked me, but I destroyed them all with the authority of the Lord. They swarmed around me like bees. They blazed against me like a crackling fire, but I destroyed them all with the authority of the Lord. My enemies did their best to kill me, but the Lord rescued me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. Songs of joy and victory are sung in the camp of the godly. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. The strong right arm of the Lord is raised in triumph. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. I will not die. Instead, I will live to tell what the Lord has done. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not let me die. Open for me the gates where the righteous enter, and I will go in and thank the Lord. These gates lead to the presence of the Lord, and the godly enter there. I thank you for answering my prayer and giving me victory. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Please, Lord, please save us. Please, Lord, please give us success. Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God shining upon us. Take the sacrifice and bind it with cords on the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. July 12, Psalm 119 Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey His laws and search for Him with all their hearts. They do not compromise with evil, and they walk only in His paths. You have charged us to keep your commandments carefully. Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. Then I will not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. As I learn your righteous regulations, I will thank you by living as I should. I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart, that I might not sin against you. 
I praise you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. I have recited aloud all the regulations you have given us. I have rejoiced in your laws as much as in riches. I will study your commandments and reflect on your ways. I will delight in your decrees and not forget your word. Be good to your servant, that I may live and obey your word. Open my eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instructions. I am only a foreigner in the land. Don't hide your commands from me. I am always overwhelmed with a desire for your regulations. You rebuke the arrogant. Those who wander from your commands are cursed. Don't let them scorn and insult me, for I have obeyed your laws. Even princes sit and speak against me, but I will meditate on your decrees. Your laws please me. They give me wise advice. I lie in the dust. Revive me by your word. I told you my plans, and you answered. Now teach me your decrees. Help me understand the meaning of your commandments, and I will meditate on your wonderful deeds. I weep with sorrow. Encourage me by your word. Keep me from lying to myself. Give me the privilege of knowing your instructions. I have chosen to be faithful. I have determined to live by your regulations. I cling to your laws, Lord. Don't let me be put to shame. I will pursue your commands, for you expand my understanding. Teach me your decrees, O Lord. I will keep them to the end. Give me understanding, and I will obey your instructions. I will put them into practice with all my heart. Make me walk along the path of your commands, for that is where my happiness is found. Give me an eagerness for your laws rather than a love for money. Turn my eyes from worthless things and give me life through your word. Reassure me of your promise made to those who fear you. Help me abandon my shameful ways, for your regulations are good. I long to obey your commandments. Renew my life with your goodness. Lord, give me your unfailing love, the salvation that you promised me. Then I can answer those who taunt me, for I trust in your word. Do not snatch your word of truth from me, for your regulations are my only hope. I will keep on obeying your instructions forever and ever. I will walk in freedom, for I have devoted myself to your commandments. I will speak to kings about your laws, and I will not be ashamed. How I delight in your commands, how I love them, I honor and love your commands, I meditate on your decrees. Remember your promise to me. It is my only hope. Your promise revives me. It comforts me in all my troubles. The proud hold me in utter contempt, but I do not turn away from your instructions. I meditate on your age-old regulations, O Lord. They comfort me. I become furious with the wicked because they reject your instructions. Your decrees have been the theme of my songs wherever I have lived. I reflect at night on who you are, O Lord. Therefore, I obey your instructions. This is how I spend my life, obeying your commandments. Lord, you are mine. I promise to obey your words. With all my heart, I want your blessings. Be merciful as you promised. I pondered the direction of my life, and I turned to follow your laws. I will hurry without delay to obey your commands. Evil people try to drag me into sin, but I am firmly anchored to your instructions. I rise at midnight to thank you for your just regulations. I am a friend to anyone who fears you, anyone who obeys your commandments. O Lord, your unfailing love fills the earth. Teach me your decrees. You have done many good things for me, Lord, just as you promised. I believe in your commands. Now teach me good judgment and knowledge. I used to wander off until you disciplined me, but now I closely follow your word. You are good and do only good. Teach me your decrees. Arrogant people smear me with lies, but in truth I obey your commandments with all my heart. Their hearts are dull and stupid, but I delight in your instructions. My suffering was good for me, for it taught me to pay attention to your decrees. Your instructions are more valuable to me than millions in gold and silver. You made me. You created me. Now give me the sense to follow your commands. 
May all who fear you find in me a cause for joy, for I have put my hope in your word. I know, O Lord, that your regulations are fair. You disciplined me because I needed it. Now let your unfailing love comfort me, just as you promised me your servant. Surround me with your tender mercies so I may live, for your instructions are my delight. Bring disgrace upon the arrogant people who lied about me. Meanwhile, I will concentrate on your commandments. Let me be united with all who fear you, with those who know your laws. May I be blameless in keeping your decrees. Then I will never be ashamed. I am worn out waiting for your rescue, but I have put my hope in your word. My eyes are straining to see your promises come true. When will you comfort me? I am shriveled like a wineskin in the smoke but I have not forgotten to obey your decrees. How long must I wait? When will you punish those who persecute me? These arrogant people who hate your instructions have dug deep pits to trap me. All your commands are trustworthy. Protect me from those who hunt me down without cause. They almost finished me off, but I refuse to abandon your commandments. In your unfailing love, spare my life. Then I can continue to obey your laws. Your eternal word, O Lord, stands firm in heaven. Your faithfulness extends to every generation, as enduring as the earth you created. Your regulations remain true to this day, for everything serves your plans. If your instructions hadn't sustained me with joy, I would have died in my misery. I will never forget your commandments, for by them you give me life. I am yours. Rescue me, for I have worked hard at obeying your commandments. Though the wicked hide along the way to kill me, I will quietly keep my mind on your laws. Even perfection has its limits, but your commands have no limit. Oh, how I love your instructions. I think about them all day long. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are my constant guide. Yes, I have more insight than my teachers, for I am always thinking of your laws. I am even wiser than my elders, for I have kept your commandments. I have refused to walk on any evil path, so that I may remain obedient to your word. I haven't turned away from your regulations, for you have taught me well. How sweet your words taste to me. They are sweeter than honey. Your commandments give me understanding. No wonder I hate every false way of life. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. I've promised it once and I'll promise it again. I will obey your righteous regulations. I have suffered much, O Lord. Restore my life again as you promised. Lord, accept my offering of praise and teach me your regulations. My life constantly hangs in the balance, but I will not stop obeying your instructions. The wicked have set their traps for me, but I will not turn from your commandments. Your laws are my treasure. They are my heart's delight. I am determined to keep your decrees to the very end. I hate those with divided loyalties, but I love your instructions. You are my refuge and my shield. Your word is my source of hope. Get out of my life, you evil-minded people, for I intend to obey the commands of my God. Lord, sustain me as you promised that I may live. Do not let my hope be crushed. Sustain me and I will be rescued. Then I will meditate continually on your decrees. But you have rejected all who stray from your decrees. They are only fooling themselves. You skim off the wicked of the earth like scum. No wonder I love to obey your laws. I tremble in fear of you. I stand in awe of your regulations. Don't leave me to the mercy of my enemies, for I have done what is just and right. Please guarantee a blessing for me. Don't let the arrogant oppress me. My eyes strain to see your rescue, to see the truth of your promise fulfilled. I am your servant. Deal with me in unfailing love and teach me your decrees. Give discernment to me, your servant. Then I will understand your laws. Lord, it is time for you to act, for these evil people have violated your instructions. Truly, I love your commands more than gold, even the finest gold. Each of your commandments is right. That is why I hate every false way. 
Your laws are wonderful. No wonder I obey them. The teaching of your word gives light so even the simple can understand. I pant with expectation, longing for your commands. Come and show me your mercy, as you do for all who love your name. Guide my steps by your word, so I will not be overcome by evil. Ransom me from the oppression of evil people, then I can obey your commandments. Look upon me with love, teach me your decrees. Rivers of tears gush from my eyes because people disobey your instructions. O Lord, you are righteous, and your regulations are fair. Your laws are perfect and completely trustworthy. I am overwhelmed with indignation, for my enemies have disregarded your words. Your promises have been thoroughly tested. That is why I love them so much. I am insignificant and despised, but I don't forget your commandments. Your justice is eternal, and your instructions are perfectly true. As pressure and stress bear down on me, I find joy in your commands. Your laws are always right. Help me to understand them so I may live. I pray with all my heart. Answer me, Lord. I will obey your decrees. I cry out to you, rescue me that I may obey your laws. I rise early before the sun is up. I cry out for help and put my hope in your words. I stay awake through the night thinking about your promise. In your faithful love, O Lord, hear my cry. Let me be revived by following your regulations. Lawless people are coming to attack me. They live far from your instructions. But you are near, O Lord, and all your commands are true. I have known from my earliest days that your laws will last forever. Look upon my suffering and rescue me, for I have not forgotten your instructions. Argue my case, take my side, protect my life as you promised. The wicked are far from rescue, for they do not bother with your decrees. Lord, how great is your mercy. Let me be revived by following your regulations. Many persecute and trouble me, yet I have not swerved from your laws. Seeing these traitors makes me sick at heart, because they care nothing for your word. See how I love your commandments, Lord. Give back my life. Because of your unfailing love, the very essence of your words is truth. All your just regulations will stand forever. Powerful people harass me without cause, but my heart trembles only at your word. I rejoice in your word like one who discovers a great treasure. I hate and abhor all falsehood, but I love your instructions. I will praise you seven times a day because all your regulations are just. Those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble. I long for your rescue, Lord. So I have obeyed your commands. I have obeyed your laws, for I love them very much. Yes, I obey your commandments and laws, because you know everything I do. O Lord, listen to my cry. Give me the discerning mind you promised. Listen to my prayer. Rescue me as you promised. Let praise flow from my lips, for you have taught me your decrees. Let my tongue sing about your word, for all your commands are right. Give me a helping hand, for I have chosen to follow your commandments. O Lord, I have longed for your rescue, and your instructions are my delight. Let me live so I can praise you, and may your regulations help me. I have wandered away like a lost sheep. Come and find me, for I have not forgotten your commands. July 13, Psalm 120 I took my troubles to the Lord. I cried out to him, and he answered my prayer. Rescue me, O Lord, from liars and from all deceitful people. O deceptive tongue, what will God do to you? How will he increase your punishment? You will be pierced with sharp arrows and burned with glowing coals. How I suffer in far-off Meshach. It pains me to live in distant Kedar. I am tired of living among people who hate peace. I search for peace, but when I speak of peace, they want war. Psalm 121 I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. 
The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Psalm 123 I lift my eyes to you, O God enthroned in heaven. We keep looking to the Lord our God for his mercy, just as servants keep their eyes on their master, as a slave girl watches her mistress for the slightest signal. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy, for we have had our fill of contempt. We have had more than our fill of the scoffing of the proud and the contempt of the arrogant. Psalm 125 Those who trust in the Lord are as secure as Mount Zion. They will not be defeated, but will endure forever. Just as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forever. The wicked will not rule the land of the godly, for then the godly might be tempted to do wrong. O Lord, do good to those who are good, whose hearts are in tune with you. But banish those who turn to crooked ways, O Lord. Take them away with those who do evil. May Israel have peace. Psalm 126 When the Lord brought back his exiles to Jerusalem, it was like a dream. We were filled with laughter and we sang for joy. And the other nation said, What amazing things the Lord has done for them. Yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What joy! Restore our fortunes, Lord, as streams renew the desert. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. They weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with the harvest. July 14, Psalm 128 How joyful are those who fear the Lord, all who follow his ways. You will enjoy the fruit of your labor. How joyful and prosperous you will be. Your wife will be like a fruitful grapevine flourishing within your home. Your children will be like vigorous young olive trees as they sit around your table. That is the Lord's blessing for those who fear him. May the Lord continually bless you from Zion. May you see Jerusalem prosper as long as you live. May you live to enjoy your grandchildren. May Israel have peace. Psalm 129 From my earliest youth my enemies have persecuted me. Let all Israel repeat this. From my earliest youth my enemies have persecuted me, but they have never defeated me. My back is covered with cuts, as if a farmer had plowed long furrows. But the Lord is good. He has cut me free from the ropes of the ungodly. May all who hate Jerusalem be turned back in shameful defeat. May they be as useless as grass on a rooftop, turning yellow when only half grown, ignored by the harvester, despised by the binder. And may those who pass by refuse to give them this blessing. The Lord bless you. We bless you in the Lord's name. Psalm 130. From the depths of despair, O Lord, I call for your help. Hear my cry, O Lord. Pay attention to my prayer. Lord, if you kept a record of our sins, who, O Lord, could ever survive? but you offer forgiveness, that we might learn to fear you. I am counting on the Lord. Yes, I am counting on him. I have put my hope in his word. I long for the Lord more than centuries long for the dawn. Yes, more than centuries long for the dawn. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is unfailing love. His redemption overflows. He himself will redeem Israel from every kind of sin. Psalm 132 Lord, remember David and all that he suffered. He made a solemn promise to the Lord. He vowed to the Mighty One of Israel, I will not go home, I will not let myself rest, I will not let my eyes sleep nor close my eyelids in slumber until I find a place to build a house for the Lord, a sanctuary for the Mighty One of Israel. We heard that the ark was in Ephrata. Then we found it in the distant countryside of Jair. Let us go to the sanctuary of the Lord. Let us worship at the footstool of his throne. 
Arise, O Lord, and enter your resting place, along with the ark, the symbol of your power. May your priests be clothed in godliness. May your loyal servants sing for joy. For the sake of your servant David, do not reject the king you have anointed. The Lord swore an oath to David with a promise he will never take back. I will place one of your descendants on your throne. If your descendants obey the terms of my covenant and the laws that I teach them, then your royal line will continue forever and ever. For the Lord has chosen Jerusalem. He has desired it for his home. This is my resting place forever, he said. I will live here, for this is the home I desired. I will bless this city and make it prosperous. I will satisfy its poor with food. I will clothe its priests with godliness. Its faithful servants will sing for joy. Here I will increase the power of David. My anointed one will be a light for my people. I will clothe his enemies with shame, but he will be a glorious king. Psalm 134 Oh, praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you who serve at night in the house of the Lord. Lift up holy hands in prayer and praise the Lord. May the Lord who made heaven and earth bless you from Jerusalem. Psalm 135 Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Him, you who serve the Lord. You who serve in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Celebrate his lovely name with music, for the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel for his own special treasure. I know the greatness of the Lord, that our Lord is greater than any other God. The Lord does whatever pleases him throughout all heaven and earth, and on the seas, and in their depths. He causes the clouds to rise over the whole earth. He sends the lightning with the rain and releases the wind from his storehouses. He destroyed the firstborn in each Egyptian home, both people and animals. He performed miraculous signs and wonders in Egypt against Pharaoh and all his people. He struck down great nations and slaughtered mighty kings, Sihon, king of the Amorites, Og, king of Bashan, and all the kings of Canaan. He gave their land as an inheritance, a special possession to his people Israel. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your fame, O Lord, is known to every generation. For the Lord will give justice to his people and have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nations are merely things of silver and gold shaped by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, and eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, and noses but cannot smell. And those who make idols are just like them, as are all who trust in them. O Israel, praise the Lord. O priests, descendants of Aaron, praise the Lord. O Levites, praise the Lord. All you who fear the Lord, praise the Lord. The Lord be praised from Zion, for he lives here in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. July 15, Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who alone does mighty miracles. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who made the heavens so skillfully. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who placed the earth among the waters. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who made the heavenly lights. His faithful love endures forever. The sun to rule the day. His faithful love endures forever. And the moon and stars to rule the night. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who killed the firstborn of Egypt. His faithful love endures forever. He brought Israel out of Egypt. His faithful love endures forever. He acted with a strong hand and powerful arm. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who parted the Red Sea. His faithful love endures forever. He led Israel safely through. 
His faithful love endures forever. But he hurled Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who led his people through the wilderness. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who struck down mighty kings. His faithful love endures forever. He killed powerful kings. His faithful love endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, his faithful love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, his faithful love endures forever. God gave the land of these kings as an inheritance. His faithful love endures forever. A special possession to his servant Israel. His faithful love endures forever. He remembered us in our weakness. His faithful love endures forever. He saved us from our enemies. His faithful love endures forever. He gives food to every living thing. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His faithful love endures forever. Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Let all that I am praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God with my dying breath. Don't put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help for you there. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth, and all their plans die with them. But joyful are those who have the God of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He made heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever. He gives justice to the oppressed and food to the hungry. The Lord frees the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord loves the godly. The Lord protects the foreigners among us. He cares for the orphans and widows, but he frustrates the plans of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever. He will be your God, O Jerusalem, throughout the generations. Praise the Lord. Psalm 147 Praise the Lord! How good to sing praises to our God! How delightful and how fitting! The Lord is rebuilding Jerusalem and bringing the exiles back to Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. He counts the stars and calls them all by name. How great is our Lord! His power is absolute. His understanding is beyond comprehension. The Lord supports the humble, but he brings the wicked down into the dust. Sing out your thanks to the Lord. Sing praises to our God with a harp. He covers the heavens with clouds, provides rain for the earth, and makes the grass grow in mountain pastures. He gives food to the wild animals and feeds the young ravens when they cry. He takes no pleasure in the strength of a horse or in human might. No, the Lord's delight is in those who fear him, those who put their hope in his unfailing love. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates and blessed your children within your walls. He sends peace across your nation and satisfies your hunger with the finest wheat. He sends his orders to the world, how swiftly his word flies. He sends the snow like white wool. He scatters frost upon the ground like ashes. He hurls the hail like stones. Who can stand against his freezing cold? Then, at his command, it all melts. He sends his winds, the ice thaws. He has revealed his words to Jacob, his decrees and regulations to Israel. He has not done this for any other nation. They do not know his regulations. Praise the Lord. Psalm 148 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him from the skies. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all the armies of heaven. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you twinkling stars. Praise Him, skies above. Praise Him, vapors high above the clouds. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord, for He issued His command, and they came into being. 
He set them in place forever and ever. His decree will never be revoked. Praise the Lord from the earth, you creatures of the ocean depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, wind and weather that obey him, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all livestock, small scurrying animals and birds, kings of the earth and all people, rulers and judges of the earth, young men and young women, old men and children. Let them all praise the name of the Lord, for his name is very great. His glory towers over the earth and heaven. He has made his people strong, honoring his faithful ones. The people of Israel who are close to him praise the Lord. Psalm 149 Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praises in the assembly of the faithful. O Israel, rejoice in your Maker. O people of Jerusalem, exalt in your King. Praise His name with dancing, accompanied by tambourine and harp. For the Lord delights in His people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let the faithful rejoice that He honors them. Let them sing for joy as they lie on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their mouths and a sharp sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with shackles and their leaders with iron chains, to execute the judgment written against them. This is the glorious privilege of His faithful ones. Praise the Lord. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heaven. Praise Him for His mighty works. Praise His unequaled greatness. Praise Him with a blast of the ram's horn. Praise Him with the lyre and harp. Praise Him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise Him with strings and flutes. Praise Him with a clash of cymbals. Praise Him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. July 16. A message about Ethiopia. Listen, Ethiopia, land of fluttering sails, that lies at the headwaters of the Nile, that sends ambassadors in swift boats down the river. Go, swift messengers, take a message to a tall, smooth-skinned people who are feared far and wide for their conquests and destruction and whose land is divided by rivers. All you people of the world, everyone who lives on the earth, when I raise my battle flag on the mountain, look! When I blow the ram's horn, listen! For the Lord has told me this, I will watch quietly from my dwelling place, as quietly as the heat rises on a summer day, or as the morning dew forms during the harvest. Even before you begin your attack, while your plans are ripening like grapes, the Lord will cut off your new growth with pruning shears. He will snip off and discard your spreading branches. Your mighty army will be left dead in the fields for the mountain vultures and wild animals. The vultures will tear at the corpses all summer. The wild animals will gnaw at the bones all winter. At that time, the Lord of Heaven's armies will receive gifts from this land divided by rivers, from this tall, smooth-skinned people who are feared far and wide for their conquests and destruction. They will bring the gifts to Jerusalem, where the Lord of Heaven's armies dwells. A Message About Egypt This message came to me concerning Egypt. Look. The Lord is advancing against Egypt, riding on a swift cloud. The idols of Egypt tremble. The hearts of the Egyptians melt with fear. I will make Egyptian fight against Egyptian, brother against brother, neighbor against neighbor, city against city, province against province. The Egyptians will lose heart, and I will confuse their plans. They will plead with their idols for wisdom and call on spirits, mediums, and those who consult the spirits of the dead. I will hand Egypt over to a hard, cruel master. A fierce king will rule them, says the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies. The waters of the Nile will fail to rise and flood the fields. The riverbed will be parched and dry. The canals of the Nile will dry up, and the streams of Egypt will stink with rotting reeds and rushes. All the greenery along the riverbank and all the crops along the river will dry up and blow away. 
The fishermen will lament for lack of work. Those who cast hooks into the Nile will groan, and those who use nets will lose heart. There will be no flax for the harvesters, no thread for the weavers. They will be in despair, and all the workers will be sick at heart. What fools are the officials of Zoan! Their best counsel to the king of Egypt is stupid and wrong. Will they still boast to Pharaoh of their wisdom? Will they dare brag about all their wise ancestors? Where are your wise counselors, Pharaoh? Let them tell you what God plans, what the Lord of heaven's armies is going to do to Egypt. The officials of Zoan are fools, and the officials of Memphis are deluded. The leaders of the people have led Egypt astray. The Lord has sent a spirit of foolishness on them, so all their suggestions are wrong. They cause Egypt to stagger like a drunk in his vomit. There is nothing Egypt can do. All are helpless, the head and the tail, the noble palm branch and the lowly reed. In that day, the Egyptians will be as weak as women. They will cower in fear beneath the upraised fist of the Lord of Heaven's armies. Just to speak the name of Israel will terrorize them, for the Lord of Heaven's armies has laid out his plans against them. In that day, five of Egypt's cities will follow the Lord of Heaven's armies. They will even begin to speak Hebrew, the language of Canaan. One of these cities will be Heliopolis, the city of the sun. In that day. There will be an altar to the Lord in the heart of Egypt, and there will be a monument to the Lord at its border. It will be a sign and a witness that the Lord of Heaven's armies is worshipped in the land of Egypt. When the people cry to the Lord for help against those who oppress them, He will send them a savior who will rescue them. The Lord will make Himself known to the Egyptians. Yes, they will know the Lord and will give their sacrifices and offerings to Him. They will make a vow to the Lord and will keep it. The Lord will strike Egypt and then He will bring healing. For the Egyptians will turn to the Lord and He will listen to their pleas and heal them. In that day, Egypt and Assyria will be connected by a highway. The Egyptians and Assyrians will move freely between their lands, and they will both worship God. And Israel will be their ally. The three will be together, and Israel will be a blessing to them. For the Lord of heaven's armies will say, "Blessed be Egypt, my people. Blessed be Assyria, the land I have made. Blessed be Israel, my special possession." A message about Egypt and Ethiopia. In the year when King Sargon of Assyria sent his commander in chief to capture the Philistine city of Ashdod, the Lord told Isaiah, son of Amoz, "Take off the burlap you have been wearing and remove your sandals." Isaiah did as he was told and walked around naked and barefoot. Then the Lord said, "My servant Isaiah has been walking around naked and barefoot for the last three years. This is a sign." A symbol of the terrible troubles I will bring upon Egypt and Ethiopia, for the king of Assyria will take away the Egyptians and Ethiopians as prisoners. He will make them walk naked and barefoot, both young and old, their buttocks bared to the shame of Egypt. Then the Philistines will be thrown into panic, for they counted on the power of Ethiopia and boasted of their allies in Egypt. They will say, "If this can happen to Egypt, what chance do we have? We were counting on Egypt to protect us from the king of Assyria." A message about Babylon. This message came to me concerning Babylon, the desert by the sea. Disaster is roaring down on you from the desert, like a whirlwind sweeping in from the Negev. I see a terrifying vision. I see the betrayer betraying, the destroyer destroying. Go ahead, you Elamites and Medes, attack and lay siege. I will make an end to all the groaning Babylon caused. My stomach aches and burns with pain. Sharp pangs of anguish are upon me, like those of a woman in labor. I grow faint when I hear what God is planning. I am too afraid to look. My mind reels and my heart races. I long for evening to come, but now I am terrified of the dark. Look, they are preparing a great feast. They are spreading rugs for people to sit on. Everyone is eating and drinking. But quick, grab your shields and prepare for battle. You are being attacked. Meanwhile, the Lord said to me, "Put a watchman on the city wall." Let him shout out what he sees. 
he should look for chariots drawn by pairs of horses and for riders on donkeys and camels. Let the watchman be fully alert. Then the watchman called out, Day after day I have stood on the watchtower, my lord. Night after night I have remained at my post. Now at last, look, here comes a man in a chariot with a pair of horses. Then the watchman said, Babylon is fallen, fallen. All the idols of Babylon lie broken on the ground. O oh, my people threshed and winnowed, I have told you everything the Lord of heaven's armies has said, everything the God of Israel has told me. A message about Edom. This message came to me concerning Edom. Someone from Edom keeps calling to me. Watchman, how much longer until morning? When will the night be over? The watchman replies, Morning is coming, but night will soon return. If you wish to ask again, then come back and ask. A Message About Arabia This message came to me concerning Arabia. O caravans from Dedan, hide in the deserts of Arabia. O people of Tima, bring water to these thirsty people, food to these weary refugees. They have fled from the sword, from the drawn sword, from the bent bow, and the terrors of battle. The Lord said to me, Within a year, counting each day, all the glory of Keter will come to an end. Only a few of its courageous archers will survive. I, the Lord, the God of Israel, have spoken. A Message About Jerusalem This message came to me concerning Jerusalem, the Valley of Vision. What is happening? Why is everyone running to the rooftops? The whole city is in a terrible uproar. What do I see in this reveling city? Bodies are lying everywhere, killed, not in battle, but by famine and disease. All your leaders have fled. They surrendered without resistance. The people tried to slip away, but they were captured too. That's why I said, leave me alone to weep. Do not try to comfort me. Let me cry for my people as I watch them being destroyed. Oh, what a day of crushing defeat. What a day of confusion and terror brought by the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies, upon the valley of vision. The walls of Jerusalem have been broken, and cries of death echo from the mountainsides. Elamites are the archers with their chariots and charioteers. The men of Kerr hold up the shields. Chariots fill your beautiful valleys, and charioteers storm your gates. Judah's defenses have been stripped away. You run to the armory for your weapons. You inspect the breaks in the walls of Jerusalem. You store up water in the lower pool. You survey the houses and tear some down for stone to strengthen the walls. Between the city walls, you build a reservoir for water from the old pool. But you never ask for help from the one who did all this. You never considered the one who planned this long ago. At that time, the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies, called you to weep and mourn. He told you to shave your heads in sorrow for your sins and to wear clothes of burlap to show your remorse. But instead, you dance and play. You slaughter cattle and kill sheep. You feast on meat and drink wine. You say, let's feast and drink, for tomorrow we die. The Lord of heaven's armies has revealed this to me. Till the day you die, you will never be forgiven for this sin. That is the judgment of the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies. A message for Shebna. This is what the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies, said to me. Confront Shebna, the palace administrator, and give him this message. Who do you think you are? And what are you doing here, building a beautiful tomb for yourself, a monument high up in the rock? For the Lord is about to hurl you away, mighty man. He is going to grab you, crumple you into a ball, and toss you away into a distant barren land. There you will die, and your glorious chariots will be broken and useless. You are a disgrace to your master. Yes, I will drive you out of office, says the Lord. I will pull you down from your high position, and then I will call my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, to replace you. I will dress him in your royal robes, and will give him your title and your authority, and he will be a father to the people of Jerusalem and Judah. I will give him the key to the house of David, the highest position in the royal court. When he opens doors, no one will be able to close them. When he closes doors, no one will be able to open them. He will bring honor to his family name, for I will drive him firmly in place like a nail in the wall. They will give him great responsibility, and he will bring honor to even the lowliest members of his family. 
But the Lord of heaven's armies also says, The time will come when I will pull out the nail that seemed so firm. It will come out and fall to the ground. Everything it supports will fall with it. I, the Lord, have spoken. A Message About Tyre This message came to me concerning Tyre. Weep, O ships of Tarshish, for the harbor and houses of Tyre are gone. The rumors you heard in Cyprus are all true. Mourn in silence, you people of the coast and you merchants of Sidon. Your traders crossed the sea, sailing over deep waters. They brought you grain from Egypt and harvests from along the Nile. You were the marketplace of the world, but now you are put to shame, city of Sidon. For Tyre, the fortress of the sea, says, Now I am childless, I have no sons or daughters. When Egypt hears the news about Tyre, there will be great sorrow. Send word now to Tarshish. Wail, you people who live in distant lands. Is this silent ruin all that is left of your once joyous city? What a long history was yours. Think of all the colonists you sent to distant places. Who has brought this disaster on Tyre, that great creator of kingdoms? Her traders were all princes. Her merchants were nobles. The Lord of heaven's armies has done it to destroy your pride and bring low all earth's nobility. Come, people of Tarshish, sweep over the land like the flooding Nile, for Tyre is defenseless. The Lord held out his hand over the sea and shook the kingdoms of the earth. He has spoken out against Phoenicia, ordering that her fortresses be destroyed. He says, Never again will you rejoice, O daughter of Sidon, for you have been crushed. Even if you flee to Cyprus, you will find no rest. Look at the land of Babylonia. The people of that land are gone. The Assyrians have handed Babylon over to the wild animals of the desert. They have built siege ramps against its walls, torn down its palaces, and turned it to a heap of rubble. Wail, O ships of Tarshish, for your harbor is destroyed. For seventy years, the length of a king's life, Tyre will be forgotten. But then the city will come back to life, as in the song about the prostitute. Take a harp. And walk the streets, you forgotten harlot. Make sweet melody and sing your songs so you will be remembered again. Yes, after seventy years, the Lord will revive Tyre. But she will be no different than she was before. She will again be a prostitute to all kingdoms around the world. But in the end, her profits will be given to the Lord. Her wealth will not be hoarded, but will provide good food and fine clothing for the Lord's priests. July 17. Destruction of the Earth Look, the Lord is about to destroy the earth and make it a vast wasteland. He devastates the surface of the earth and scatters the people, priests and laypeople, servants and masters, maids and mistresses, buyers and sellers, lenders and borrowers, bankers and debtors. None will be spared. The earth will be completely emptied and looted. The Lord has spoken. The earth mourns and dries up, and the crops waste away and wither. Even the greatest people on earth waste away. The earth suffers for the sins of its people, for they have twisted God's instructions, violated His laws, and broken His everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse consumes the earth. Its people must pay the price for their sin. They are destroyed by fire, and only a few are left alive. The grapevines waste away, and there is no new wine. All the merrymakers sigh and mourn. The cheerful sound of tambourines is stilled. The happy cries of celebration are heard no more. The melodious chords of the harp are silent. Gone are the joys of wine and song. Alcoholic drink turns bitter in the mouth. The city writhes in chaos. Every home is locked to keep out intruders. Mobs gather in the streets, crying out for wine. Joy has turned to gloom. Gladness has been banished from the land. The city is left in ruins, its gates battered down. Throughout the earth, the story is the same. Only a remnant is left, like the stray olives left on the tree, or the few grapes left on the vine after harvest. But all who are left shout and sing for joy. Those in the West praise the Lord's majesty. In eastern lands, give glory to the Lord. In the lands beyond the sea, praise the name of the Lord, the God of Israel.
we hear songs of praise from the ends of the earth, songs that give glory to the righteous one. But my heart is heavy with grief. Weep for me, for I wither away. Deceit still prevails, and treachery is everywhere. Terror and traps and snares will be your lot, you people of the earth. Those who flee in terror will fall into a trap, and those who escape the trap will be caught in a snare. Destruction falls like rain from the heavens. The foundations of the earth shake. The earth has broken up. It has utterly collapsed. It is violently shaken. The earth staggers like a drunk. It trembles like a tent in a storm. It falls and will not rise again, for the guilt of its rebellion is very heavy. In that day the Lord will punish the gods in the heavens and the proud rulers of the nations on earth. They will be rounded up and put in prison. They will be shut up in prison and will finally be punished. Then the glory of the moon will wane, and the brightness of the sun will fade, for the Lord of heaven's armies will rule on Mount Zion. He will rule in great glory in Jerusalem, in the sight of all the leaders of his people. Praise for Judgment and Salvation O Lord, I will honor and praise your name, for you are my God. You do such wonderful things. You planned them long ago, and now you have accomplished them. You turn mighty cities into heaps of ruins. Cities with strong walls are turned to rubble. Beautiful palaces in distant lands disappear and will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong nations will declare your glory. Ruthless nations will fear you. But you are a tower of refuge to the poor, O Lord, a tower of refuge to the needy in distress. You are a refuge from the storm and a shelter from the heat. For the oppressive acts of ruthless people are like a storm beating against a wall or like the relentless heat of the desert. But you silence the roar of foreign nations. As the shade of a cloud cools relentless heat, so the boastful songs of ruthless people are stilled. In Jerusalem, the Lord of Heaven's armies will spread a wonderful feast for all the people of the world. It will be a delicious banquet with clear, well-aged wine and choice meat. There he will remove the cloud of gloom, the shadow of death that hangs over the earth. He will swallow up death forever. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away all tears. He will remove forever all insults and mockery against his land and people. The Lord has spoken. In that day the people will proclaim, This is our God. We trusted in Him and He saved us. This is the Lord in whom we trusted. Let us rejoice in the salvation He brings. For the Lord's hand of blessing will rest on Jerusalem, but Moab will be crushed. It will be like straw trampled down and left to rot. God will push down Moab's people as a swimmer pushes down water with his hands. He will end their pride and all their evil works. The high walls of Moab will be demolished. They will be brought down to the ground, down into the dust. A Song of Praise to the Lord In that day, everyone in the land of Judah will sing this song. Our city is strong. We are surrounded by the walls of God's salvation. Open the gates to all who are righteous. Allow the faithful to enter. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. He humbles the proud and brings down the arrogant city. He brings it down to the dust. The poor and oppressed trample it underfoot, and the needy walk all over it. But for those who are righteous, the way is not steep and rough. You are a God who does what is right, and you smooth out the path ahead of them. Lord, we show our trust in you by obeying your laws. Our heart's desire is to glorify your name. All night long I search for you. In the morning I earnestly seek for God. For only when you come to judge the earth will people learn what is right. Your kindness to the wicked does not make them do good. Although others do right, the wicked keep doing wrong and take no notice of the Lord's majesty. O oh Lord, they pay no attention to your upraised fist. Show them your eagerness to defend your people. Then they will be ashamed. Let your fire consume your enemies. Lord, you will grant us peace. All we have accomplished is really from you. 
O Lord our God, others have ruled us, but you alone are the one we worship. Those we served before are dead and gone. Their departed spirits will never return. You attacked them and destroyed them, and they are long forgotten. O Lord, you have made our nation great. Yes, you have made us great. You have extended our borders, and we give you the glory. Lord, in distress, we searched for you. We prayed beneath the burden of your discipline. Just as a pregnant woman writhes and cries out in pain as she gives birth, so were we in your presence, Lord. We too writhe in agony, but nothing comes of our suffering. We have not given salvation to the earth nor brought life into the world. But those who die in the Lord will live. Their bodies will rise again. Those who sleep in the earth will rise up and sing for joy. For your life-giving light will fall like dew on your people in the place of the dead. Restoration for Israel Go home, my people, and lock your doors. Hide yourselves for a little while until the Lord's anger has passed. Look, the Lord is coming from heaven to punish the people of the earth for their sins. The earth will no longer hide those who have been killed. They will be brought out for all to see. A Message About Jerusalem What sorrow awaits Ariel, the city of David? Year after year you celebrate your feasts, yet I will bring disaster upon you, and there will be much weeping and sorrow. For Jerusalem will become what her name Ariel means, an altar covered with blood. I will be your enemy, surrounding Jerusalem and attacking its walls. I will build siege towers and destroy it. Then deep from the earth you will speak. From low in the dust your words will come. Your voice will whisper from the ground like a ghost conjured up from the grave. But suddenly your ruthless enemies will be crushed like the finest of dust. Your many attackers will be driven away like chaff before the wind. Suddenly, in an instant, I, the Lord of heaven's armies, will act for you with thunder and earthquake and great noise, with whirlwind and storm and consuming fire. All the nations fighting against Jerusalem will vanish like a dream. Those who are attacking her walls will vanish like a vision in the night. A hungry person dreams of eating but wakes up still hungry. A thirsty person dreams of drinking but is still faint from thirst when morning comes. So it will be with your enemies, with those who attack Mount Zion. Are you amazed and incredulous? Don't you believe it? Then go ahead and be blind. You are stupid, but not from wine. You stagger, but not from liquor. For the Lord has poured out on you a spirit of deep sleep. He has closed the eyes of your prophets and visionaries. All the future events in this vision are like a sealed book to them. When you give it to those who can read, they will say, We can't read it because it is sealed. When you give it to those who cannot read, they will say, We don't know how to read. And so the Lord says, These people say they are mine. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And their worship of me is nothing but man-made rules learned by rote. Because of this, I will once again astound these hypocrites with amazing wonders. The wisdom of the wise will pass away, and the intelligence of the intelligent will disappear. What sorrow awaits those who try to hide their plans from the Lord, who do their evil deeds in the dark. The Lord can't see us, they say. He doesn't know what's going on. How foolish can you be? He is the potter, and he is certainly greater than you, the clay. Should the created thing say of the one who made it, he didn't make me? Does a jar ever say, the potter who made me is stupid? Soon, And it will not be very long. The forests of Lebanon will become a fertile field, and the fertile field will yield bountiful crops. In that day, the deaf will hear words read from a book, and the blind will see through the gloom and darkness. The humble will be filled with fresh joy from the Lord. The poor will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. The scoffer will be gone. The arrogant will disappear, and those who plot evil will be killed. Those who convict the innocent by their false testimony will disappear. A similar fate awaits those who use trickery to pervert justice and who tell lies to destroy the innocent. 
That is why the Lord, who redeemed Abraham, says to the people of Israel, My people will no longer be ashamed or turn pale with fear, for when they see their many children and all the blessings I have given them, they will recognize the holiness of the Holy One of Israel. They will stand in awe of the God of Jacob. Then the wayward will gain understanding and complainers will accept instruction. July 18, Judah's Worthless Treaty with Egypt What sorrow awaits my rebellious children, says the Lord. You make plans that are contrary to mine. You make alliances not directed by my spirit, thus piling up your sins. For without consulting me, you have gone down to Egypt for help. You have put your trust in Pharaoh's protection. You have tried to hide in his shade. But by trusting Pharaoh you will be humiliated. And by depending on him, you will be disgraced. For though his power extends to Zoan and his officials have arrived in Hanes, all who trust in him will be ashamed. He will not help you. Instead, he will disgrace you. This message came to me concerning the animals in the Negev. The caravan moved slowly across the terrible desert to Egypt. Donkeys weighed down with riches and camels loaded with treasure all to pay for Egypt's protection. They travel through the wilderness, a place of lionesses and lions, a place where vipers and poisonous snakes live. All this and Egypt will give you nothing in return. Egypt's promises are worthless. Therefore, I call her Rahab the harmless dragon. A warning for rebellious Judah. Now go and write down these words. Write them in a book. They will stand until the end of time as a witness that these people are stubborn rebels who refuse to pay attention to the Lord's instructions. They tell the seers, stop seeing visions. They tell the prophets, don't tell us what is right. Tell us nice things. Tell us lies. Forget all this gloom. Get off your narrow path. Stop telling us about your Holy One of Israel. This is the reply of the Holy One of Israel. Because you despise what I tell you and trust instead in oppression and lies, calamity will come upon you suddenly like a bulging wall that bursts and falls. In an instant it will collapse and come crashing down. You will be smashed like a piece of pottery, shattered so completely that there won't be a piece big enough to carry coals from a fireplace or a little water from the well. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel, says, Only in returning to me and resting in me will you be saved. In quietness and confidence is your strength, but you would have none of it. You said, No, we will get our help from Egypt. They will give us swift horses for riding into battle, but the only swiftness you are going to see is the swiftness of your enemies chasing you. One of them will chase a thousand of you. Five of them will make all of you flee. You will be left like a lonely flagpole on a hill or a tattered banner on a distant mountaintop. Blessings for the Lord's people. So the Lord must wait for you to come to him so he can show you his love and compassion. For the Lord is a faithful God. Blessed are those who wait for his help. O people of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. He will be gracious if you ask for help. He will surely respond to the sound of your cries. Though the Lord gave you adversity for food and suffering for drink, he will still be with you to teach you. You will see your teacher with your own eyes. Your own ears will hear him. Right behind you, a voice will say, This is the way you should go, whether to the right or to the left. Then you will destroy all your silver idols and your precious gold images. You will throw them out like filthy rags, saying to them, Good riddance. Then the Lord will bless you with rain at planting time. There will be wonderful harvests and plenty of pasture land for your livestock. The oxen and donkeys that till the ground will eat good grain, its chaff blown away by the wind. In that day when your enemies are slaughtered and the towers fall, 
There will be streams of water flowing down every mountain and hill. The moon will be as bright as the sun, and the sun will be seven times brighter, like the light of seven days in one. So it will be when the Lord begins to heal his people and cure the wounds he gave them. Look, the Lord is coming from far away. Burning with anger, surrounded by thick, rising smoke. His lips are filled with fury. His words consume like fire. His hot breath pours out like a flood up to the neck of his enemies. He will sift out the proud nations for destruction. He will bridle them and lead them away to ruin. But the people of God will sing a song of joy like the songs at the holy festivals. You will be filled with joy as when a flutist leads a group of pilgrims to Jerusalem, the mountain of the Lord, to the rock of Israel. And the Lord will make his majestic voice heard. He will display the strength of his mighty arm. It will descend with devouring flames, with cloudbursts, thunderstorms, and huge hailstones. At the Lord's command, the Assyrians will be shattered. He will strike them down with his royal scepter. And as the Lord strikes them with his rod of punishment, his people will celebrate with tambourines and harps. Lifting his mighty arm, he will fight the Assyrians. Topheth, the place of burning, has long been ready for the Assyrian king. The pyre is piled high with wood. The breath of the Lord, like fire from a volcano, will set it ablaze. The Futility of Relying on Egypt What sorrow awaits those who look to Egypt for help, trusting their horses, chariots, and charioteers, and depending on the strength of human armies instead of looking to the Lord, the Holy One of Israel? In his wisdom, the Lord will send great disaster. He will not change his mind. He will rise against the wicked and against their helpers. For these Egyptians are mere humans, not God. Their horses are puny flesh, not mighty spirits. When the Lord raises his fist against them, those who help will stumble, and those being helped will fall. They will all fall down and die together. But this is what the Lord has told me. When a strong young lion stands growling over a sheep it is killed, it is not frightened by the shouts and noise of a whole crowd of shepherds. In the same way, the Lord of heaven's armies will come down and fight on Mount Zion. The Lord of heaven's armies will hover over Jerusalem and protect it like a bird protecting its nest. He will defend and save the city. He will pass over it and rescue it. Though you are such wicked rebels, my people, come and return to the Lord. I know the glorious day will come when each of you will throw away the gold idols and silver images your sinful hands have made. The Assyrians will be destroyed, but not by the swords of men. The sword of God will strike them, and they will panic and flee. The strong young Assyrians will be taken away as captives. Even the strongest will quake with terror, and princes will flee when they see your battle flags, says the Lord, whose fire burns in Zion, whose flame blazes from Jerusalem. Israel's Ultimate Deliverance Look! A righteous king is coming, and honest princes will rule under him. Each one will be like a shelter from the wind and a refuge from the storm, like streams of water in the desert and the shadow of a great rock in a parched land. Then everyone who has eyes will be able to see the truth, and everyone who has ears will be able to hear it. Even the hotheads will be full of sense and understanding. Those who stammer will speak out plainly. In that day, ungodly fools will not be heroes. Scoundrels will not be respected. For fools speak foolishness and make evil plans. They practice ungodliness and spread false teachings about the Lord. They deprive the hungry of food and give no water to the thirsty. The smooth tricks of scoundrels are evil. They plot crooked schemes. They lie to convict the poor, even when the cause of the poor is just. But generous people plan to do what is generous, and they stand firm in their generosity. 
Listen, you women who lie around in ease, listen to me, you who are so smug, in a short time, just a little more than a year, you careless ones will suddenly begin to care, for your fruit crops will fail and the harvest will never take place. Tremble, you women of ease, throw off your complacency, strip off your pretty clothes and put on burlap to show your grief. Beat your breasts in sorrow for your bountiful farms and your fruitful grapevines, for your land And will be overgrown with thorns and briars. Your joyful homes and happy towns will be gone. The palace and the city will be deserted, and busy towns will be empty. Wild donkeys will frolic, and flocks will graze in the empty forts and watchtowers until at last the Spirit is poured out on us from heaven. Then the wilderness will become a fertile field, and the fertile field will yield bountiful crops. Justice will rule in the wilderness and righteousness in the fertile field. And this righteousness will bring peace. Yes, it will bring quietness and confidence forever. My people will live in safety, quietly at home. They will be at rest. Even if the forest should be destroyed and the city torn down, the Lord will greatly bless his people wherever they plant seed Bountiful crops will spring up. Their cattle and donkeys will graze freely. A Message About Assyria What sorrow awaits you, Assyrians, who have destroyed others, but have never been destroyed yourselves? You betray others, but you have never been betrayed. When you are done destroying, you will be destroyed. When you are done betraying, you will be betrayed. But, Lord, be merciful to us, for we have waited for you. Be our strong arm each day and our salvation in times of trouble. The enemy runs at the sound of your voice. When you stand up, the nations flee. Just as caterpillars and locusts strip the fields and vines, so the fallen army of Assyria will be stripped. Though the Lord is very great and lives in heaven, he will make Jerusalem his home of justice and righteousness. In that day, he will be your sure foundation, providing a rich store of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord will be your treasure. But now your brave warriors weep in public. Your ambassadors of peace cry in bitter disappointment. Your roads are deserted. No one travels them anymore. The Assyrians have broken their peace treaty and care nothing for the promises they made before witnesses. They have no respect for anyone. The land of Israel wilts in mourning. Lebanon withers with shame. The plain of Sharon is now a wilderness. Bashan and Carmel have been plundered. But the Lord says, Now I will stand up. Now I will show my power and might. You Assyrians produce nothing but dry grass and stubble. Your own breath will turn to fire and consume you. Your people will be burned up completely, like thorn bushes cut down and tossed in a fire. Listen to what I have done, you nations far away, and you that are near acknowledge my might. The sinners in Jerusalem shake with fear. Terror seizes the godless. Who can live with this devouring fire, they cry? Who can survive this all-consuming fire? Those who are honest and fair, who refuse to profit by fraud, who stay far away from bribes, who refuse to listen to those who plot murder, who shut their eyes to all enticement to do wrong, these are the ones who will dwell on high. The rocks of the mountains will be their fortress. Food will be supplied to them, and they will have water in abundance. Your eyes will see the king in all his splendor, and you will see a land that stretches into the distance. You will think back to this time of terror, asking, Where are the Assyrian officers who counted our towers? Where are the bookkeepers who recorded the plunder taken from our fallen city? You will no longer see these fierce, violent people with their strange, unknown language. Instead, you will see Zion as a place of holy festivals. You will see Jerusalem, a city quiet and secure. It will be like a tent whose ropes are taut and whose stakes are firmly fixed. The Lord will be our mighty one. He will be like a wide river of protection that no enemy can cross, that no enemy ship can sail upon. For the Lord is our judge, our lawgiver, and our king. He will care for us and save us.
The enemy sails hang loose on broken masts with useless tackle. Their treasure will be divided by the people of God. Even the lame will take their share. The people of Israel will no longer say, We are sick and helpless, for the Lord will forgive their sins.